Hi everyone! Today I am going to be doing a review on the third and final book in the Ruby Red trilogy, and that is Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear. So for those of you who haven't read the Ruby Red trilogy, let's just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of these books. I mean, look at them. They're covered in this beautiful, like, pattern and these little framing and the beautiful pictures and these little tiny gemstones. They're gorgeous and yeah, and they're pretty much as elaborate in story as they are in, bo in book cover. Their, their stories are so elaborate and so thought, well thought out and so well planned. Kirsten Gear did a really great job with these books and so I, I can't really say a bad thing about this series. Um, if you haven't read this series, I highly suggest it. I give this series probably a 4.5 out of 5. If you haven't read it, it's a, about a 16 year old girl who, who comes from a very long line of time travelers and it's all about her adventures and the twists in her life that she is not expecting and no one else in her family has expected for her. and. Yeah, it's. I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to ruin it for you. Um, but yeah, it's about time travel and history. It takes place in London, so that was really fun. Um, cause I don't read anything else like that other than like Harry Potter. But um, but yeah, modern day England, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and so yeah, on to the review. So for Emerald Green, um, I just finished it this morning and. I I cannot say anything bad about this book. I I loved it. It was my favorite definitely out of the three. Um I feel like it it concluded the story in a really nice way. Um the yeah, the everything that happened was perfect. And um the slow kind of pace that I had an issue with in the first two books didn't have an, a problem with this book. It it was fast paced the entire time for me. It ha it fixed all the problems that I had with the other two. Um, the other two were kind of slow for me until the very end when they would just pick up at right at the end of like the last two chapters and I'd be like, oh, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then I'd want to go to the second book and it was kind of slow again until the last two chapters and boom, it'd take off again. But with, with Emerald Green, it was constant. I, I was really worried after reading the first two books that, that it was going to be predictable and I, I was like, oh, I've got this figured out. I know who, I know who the traitor in the, in the Guardians is. Oh, I know, like, what's gonna happen to them at the end. Oh, I know. I'm, but I, I was seriously surprised. Like, I did not see the ending coming at all. Um, when she was talking about how, like, it's, oh, they mentioned something about the person, the traitor in the inner circle is always somebody that you wouldn't consider. It's, um, someone that seems harmless, and so I'm thinking, oh no, it's a Mr. George, it's Mr. George, uh, it's Mr. George, and I was just totally convinced it was him, I was totally convinced it was him, and I was like preparing myself mentally for that like betrayal, and yeah, and so in the end when it wasn't him and it was Mr. Whitman, I, no, I didn't think, I did not see that one coming. I didn't, I, I thought, okay, if it's not Mr. George, it's probably Dr. White because, you know, he was a real jerk to her in the beginning and I don't trust you and, and, and she's a stupid little girl. And then towards the end, he started to like warm up to her. And so I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's, it's gotta be Mr. George or Dr. White. It has to be, right? I did not see that coming. And so I was kind of glad about that. I was really happy um, that she didn't die. I was really happy she didn't die um, in that scene where Alistair attacks them and she gets stabbed in the heart because I'm I was like freaking out I'm like no no they can't but no it ended happy and I was so oh well, I was so happy with how it ended I did not see the whole immortality thing coming that that took me for a loop like I was just like whoa whoa she's immortal hold on she's immortal and then, but I was, I was worried. I was like, 
I'm like, well, if she's immortal, then it means that she's gonna live forever, and then Gideon's gonna die eventually. I'm like, but then, but then I was like, oh wait, that's right, they have the chronograph, and they can make their own Philosopher's Stone, and so, yeah, I was really happy about that. Um, so she doesn't have to live forever by herself. Um, but yeah, um, I, I also liked what they did with James' story, how they, um, you know, she was able to save him, kind of forcibly save him. Um, uh, like article from the, uh, the London Society Gazette about, uh, James and his new fiance and how, like, they're, you know, they're happy together and it was just, it was really cute. The, um, epilogue of the book, I, um, I was really happy to see that, like, Lucy and Paul again, like, see them again. And that they, they've kind of established a new life in 1912, 1919 or whatever. And, um, with Lady Tinley and, uh, Lucy's pregnant again. That was really sweet. And serious question though. And let me know what you guys think. I want to hear your theories on this. If Gwyneth and Gideon have kids, are the kids going to be immortal also? Or is it going to be like a Twilight Renesmee kind of thing where she's like, half immortal, half mortal, because, I mean, technically now, both, okay, Gideon and Gwyneth are now both immortal, so if they have kids, then that's, like, a really prominent gene. Are they gonna get that gene? Or do they have, like, a half chance of getting that gene because their mother was originally an immortal and their father wasn't? Well, what's gonna happen there? Or are they just gonna age like regular people? And No, I'm just gonna tell myself that like genetics wise, I tell myself it's a genetic thing. So if the two of them are mortal, then their kids are gonna be mortal. Yeah, that's, I'm just gonna tell myself that. But seriously, I want to hear you guys' theories about what you think about that, because that's what I was thinking about at the end. And I was like, oh, they had a happy ending. They're gonna live forever. I was so happy. But then I'm like, when when Paul mentions that, oh, he's worried about like them saying when they're gonna be grandparents. I was like, but but if they have kids, what does that mean? Me. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this book, and yeah, it was it was great. It was definitely my favorite, definitely. And uh, if I had a choice, I'd read them again. We're fun, and uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that review, and I'll see you soon. Bye.